Today, I'm going to disagree with Elon Musk, and then I'm going to agree with him too. <laughs> this is Randy Kirk. If you like the content on this channel, please like and subscribe and comment. All of that stuff helps the channel, helps more people see the content, which then helps more people see the content. Anyway, uh, and also we're looking for folks to join Patreon, but let's get right into the subject matter for today. Um, Hertz only bought half as many cars last year as they said they intended to. So today in their earnings uh, uh, report, they said they only bought, they told the total number of, of cars that they had uh, purchased last year and the percentage that were Teslas. And it turns out that that was less than half of what they said they were going to buy. Um, so this is where I'm going to disagree with Elon Musk. Apparently, I don't absolutely know that this is true, that I'm disagreeing with him. But when Hertz said, we want to buy these vehicles, he said, well, go online and buy them. <laughs> and that's great. And they did. And they bought a bunch. But they didn't buy as many as they might have. So sometimes when you're sitting in the catbird seat, there's a, and take this, you know, in your business, whatever, in your home life, wherever it is, you're sitting in the catbird seat and you make decisions based on your position at the time rather than thinking long term. I think of Elon as being one of the best 4D chess players, long term thinkers that there is in the world, but we don't always get it right. I would have picked up the phone personally. I would have picked up the phone immediately. I would have called Hertz. I would have said, hey, buddy, <laughs> we are excited about what you want to do. We want to smooth your process. We want to put one uh, customer service person just in charge of you. Uh, let me introduce you to this person so that you can uh, have a great relationship with us. What else can we do to help? How can we benefit you even greater in the future? Um, maybe that'll happen. See, so I, I may not be uh, disagreeing with Elon at all, but it, on the face of it, from what we understand, none of that took place. So now the, the year continues along and Elon's raising prices, raising prices. And maybe Hertz said, hey, uh, at these prices, no, we're not going to buy right now. Let's see, maybe they'll, the prices will relax, relax a little bit later. And then, of course, toward the end of the year, they did relax a little bit. But by that time, um, there was uh, not much time left for them to make those purchases. Again, we don't know when exactly they bought what they bought. But if there had been a relationship, and maybe there was, uh, if there was a relationship, then you could be talking to them all along this period. And before you have to reduce your prices to the average consumer, you could say, listen, this is a one-time thing, but we'd like to move 50,000 extra cars in January, I mean, in uh, December, um, or 20,000 or 30,000. What do you say? We'll offer you 5% off, which is a lot less than some of the numbers that actually got uh, reduced. So I'm just saying, this is what I would have done. I would have also, as you've, if you've been following me for a long time, starting in the, the latter part of last year, I would have put in a, an entire team of salespeople to call on the major fleets. And in particular, the uh, car rental fleets. They buy tremendous numbers of car, cars and they run through them quickly. And there was an obvious opportunity with, re, with Hertz leading the way to take advantage of the headlines at that time and to potentially land relationships with a lot of these folks. I think this is a mistake. I think that's what should be happening. Uh, if you're bumping up against any kind of demand uh, issues at all, uh, this would be such a great way to solve the problem. I talk about it in the Elon Musk mission. If you haven't bought your copy yet, you can read all about the details of what I'm talking about with regard to the po huge potential in the fleet business and in particular in the uh, re rental car business. So that would be number one. There's now is the time to do it. Get back out there. Talk to Avis. Talk to Hertz. Talk to all the majors. I don't know who they are anymore. Dollar and economy and all these folks. I haven't paid attention for a long time as to who the majors are in the rental car business. But get those relationships going. Uh, there's going to be potent. Who knows? Next year you might have an extra couple hundred thousand cars you'd like to move. Um, maybe you'd like to be able to keep a factory running, and you can say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna call Hertz and say, hey, I want to keep the factory running for the next uh, uh, 30 days flat out. And it looks like I don't have enough demand. It's just a great way to have a, a fallback position, as well as an ongoing relationship with these major companies. So that may be a disagreement with Elon. Uh, in the meantime, you may notice that Elon has been following my, my uh, 
my playbook almost exactly since the major price cuts, which I did not predict, which I was completely flabbergasted by. But on some of the other stuff, it's all coming true. So notice more price raises. If you're following me, you know that I said after the big price cuts, expect price increases. Expect them by model. Expect them by territory, by geographic area. It's going to be different here. It's going to be different there, depending on demand, depending on uh, what uh, the competition might be doing in any particular location. So we saw several price increases now in the Model Ys, a little price decline in the Model 3. We saw this incredible lease deal, uh, which I again project predicted several times, did a whole uh, an entire YouTube video on the potential for, uh, for Tesla to be able to use the leasing lever because they can do the leases internally, the financing of the leases internally, and make a lot more money on the car at $349, which is what it is now, compared to selling the car out, outright. So you get a headline off of that. You pick up a buyer who may not have the down payment, who may not be able to make the monthly payments on a purchase. And um, it's just to me, it's just the right way to do things. And they have been doing that precisely as I predicted. Uh, in fact, even down to the exact number, I still think uh, 299 would be incredible, and I think they can afford it. Whether they'll do that or not, I think the 349 might be the last we'll see of that particular uh, 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 set of marketing efforts with regard to the leasing program. So if you have any friends who have been thinking about maybe they'd like to have an electric car, and maybe they'd like to have a Tesla, if you can go out and buy and, rent and lease a, uh, uh, a Tesla today for 349 you save $60 a month on, on gasoline and, and repairs. Uh, you're down under $300 a month on a car. It's kind of hard to uh, beat that opportunity. So a little marketing exercise today, a little catch up with regard to what's going on. I think we'll continue to see all of this pricing adjustments take place month after month until there's kind of a, there, there could be a flat time. There could be a time when there's no reason to be uh, manipulating the prices all that much. Uh, but for right now, I think it's exactly the right thing to do. I think it's going to increase the overall margins for the year. I'm becoming very bullish on them hitting whatever they continue to sell, whatever they produce this year. I don't. Th I think that's a far drawn conclusion. And um, if this is content that you like, if this was helpful and useful, please hit the like button. Uh, please subscribe and all that stuff. Please buy the book, The Elon Musk Mission. And hey, it's been great talking to you today.